Hello. Welcome to Daily Devotions. Do you know why many of us are depressed? It is because our joy has been stolen. Today we shall remind ourselves that the God we serve is a God who is able to meet every need of ours and to restore unto us the joy of our salvation. He is not a God who meets us halfway and asks us to come to the other half. He meets all our needs, all the way. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we bless your holy name. We thank you for all the provisions you have given us through your Son, that we should be equipped for every good work, that we should not fret and be anxious, but that in everything we should come to you in prayer. And you, O Lord, we meet our every need. That is in accordance with your will. So that our joy will be full. Teach us to understand that. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. Still our hearts in our present circumstances. Let us know you, as the God who is able to do more than we think or ask. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Before we continue, I have a favor to ask of you. If you have not already subscribed, please support our work by doing so, and share the video with family and friends. Thank you. Many of us would rather believe the lies of the enemy than to trust the promises of God. And that is why our joy has been stolen from us. We look at our flesh, our weakness, our sickness, our pain. Rather than look to the God of all flesh, we look at the world, our circumstances. Rather than look to the Creator of all things, we listen to the devil whisper in our ears. Yea, hath God said. Instead of listening to the God who said, I have blessed you with all blessings. Don't let the enemy steal your joy. During my devotions, I was moved by what the psalmist said in Psalm 19, concerning the Word of God. And how it meets our needs. David uses words like law, statutes, precepts, and commands? But they all refer to the Word of God. The terms he uses to describe God's Word are meant to build our trust and faith in the power and effectiveness of what God has said. David tells us that the Scriptures are perfect, trustworthy, right, and radiant. That is the kind of revelation that I want to stake my life on. The Word of God is intended by the Lord to meet my deepest needs. In the first instance, we are told that because the law is perfect, it is able to revive my soul. My soul is in need of revival. How about yours? The daily hustle of life has a tendency to wear us down. Not only physically, but spiritually as well. There are times when we feel so weak that we are not sure we can pray or do the things God asks of us. It is in God's perfect word that we find revival power. Daily time reading the Bible is not just a good thing to do. It is essential if our souls are to be revived and filled with life and joy. Daily Bible reading allows the Holy Spirit to bring life from the dead. As the Word of God is breathed into us. As we read through Scripture. From the Old Testament to the New. Our faith in God is strengthened. We begin to see Him as a God who has the ability. To solve every problem of ours. Be it physical, spiritual, emotional, or psychological, everything we go through. We are told in Jeremiah 32:27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? If I know the God I have believed in, 
and I know that nothing is too difficult for him. Why then do I sit and cry? Why do I get all worried because I see the storm? Why do I shriek in fear because I see a lion in my path? Paul says. I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able. 2 Timothy 1:12. And what is God able to do? Able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, Ephesians 3:20. Able to make all grace abound toward you. That ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work, 2 Corinthians 9:8. Able to succor them that are tempted, Hebrews 2:18. Able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them, Hebrews 7:25. Able to keep you for falling. And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, Jude 1:24. Able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day, 2 Timothy 1:12. There is no promise too hard for the Lord to fulfill, Jeremiah 32:17. There is no prayer too hard for the Lord to answer, Genesis 18:14. There is no problem too hard for the Lord to solve, Matthew 19:26. There is no place too hard for the Lord to move or revive. For nothing will be impossible with God. Luke 1:37. Even the dry bones shall live, Ezekiel 37 1-14. He makes a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert, Isaiah 43 19. There is no heart too hard that the Lord cannot break and save, Hebrews 7 25. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds, Psalm 147 3. There is no epoch too hard for the Lord to repeat. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever, Hebrews 13 8. The latter glory of this house shall be greater than the former. Says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, declares the Lord of hosts, Haggai 2 9. I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. The hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army. Which I sent among you, Joel 2:25. And I will multiply on you man and beast. And they shall multiply, and be fruitful. And I will cause you to be inhabited as in your former times. And will do more good to you than ever before. Then you will know that I am the Lord, Ezekiel 36:11. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. According to the power that works in us, Ephesians 3.20. That, dear believer, is what God has promised you. And every word he has promised will be fulfilled. For he is not a God who lies. Don't let the devil ever cause you to look at your challenges. For if he can let your focus be on your challenges. Instead on the word of God then he has stolen your joy. If the joy of the Lord is our strength, then Satan will do all he can to take away our joy. Paul wrote to the Galatians concerning a circumstance they were facing and asked, What has happened to all your joy? Galatians 4:15. The rightness of God's word can restore our joy. Spending time with God in the pages of his word realigns our life with his righteousness, and brings us joy. May we come to know God. As a God who is willing and able to meet our needs. Our trust is not in man. Who may be willing but may not be able. Or who may be able but not willing. Our trust is in the Lord God Almighty. Who is able and willing to meet our need. To him be glory now and forever. Amen.